Welcome along to another video. Today I want to talk to you about angle of attack, pressure on the ball. And often the case is that people always ask, oh, well, I don't really take much of a divot and I don't really feel like I can press the golf ball. Well, that's a, that's a large topic, but today I wanted to give you some ideas on how you can improve the pressure on the golf ball and improve your attack angle. Now, often the case when golfers are trying to improve their game, uh, they want two things. One, they want the ball to fly straight, and two, they'd like to feel a bit more pressure, a bit more compression uh, into the ball and the turf so that they take a divot. Now, what normally happens is when a guy comes onto the mat and he hits a shot, the first thing you usually see of someone that complains of not having any divot or any pressure on the ball is a low attack angle. So you can see in the bottom left hand corner there, I've got an attack angle of only 0.8 down. What that meant was that down at the bottom of the golf ball, the club head to some degree, and this is slight gen generalization, that the club head was overtaking the handle. So without doing anything else, if I had the ability to immediately switch someone on to make them hit down more, which I can um, with various tools, I then get them to just hit down to create an improved angle of attack. What we would tend to see is a ball flight that looks a little bit more like this. Now it fades out to the right. Now look at the attack angle on the left hand side. We can see it's now 7.1 down. So I've increased the attack angle, but unfortunately all the time you increase attack angle, depending on the direction of this handle, it will have a negative effect on the club face. So the more that we hit down, invariably, if the handle moves down and away from you, if you like, in terms of trying to create more shaft lean to hit down, you can see it will sacrifice the angle of the club face. So what I want to do is just to give you a little uh, drill that's going to help you appreciate what it needs to feel like and also the direction the handle needs to travel in to give you the best of both worlds. Sounds good, huh? So what I want you to do is find yourself a straight edge. Uh, and so this is how you'd be set up to the golf ball, obviously, as usual. I just want you to stand up, as I say, against the straight edge with the club face parallel or pressed up against the straight edge. And then I want you to get closer to the wall and just make the pivot point or the contact point, I don't know what, eight, 12 inches halfway up the, uh, up the shaft. And then put the handle back underneath your chest. And then as you pull the handle, if you pull it towards the target, what will happen is the club face will start to open up. If I now pull the club around me, keeping this gap here between the butt of the golf club and let's say my belt buckle the same, and I move it around me, what you'll find is that this face angle will stay much squarer to the target line all the time you pull on the golf club. Now the first time you get someone to do this, invariably they can't move the handle because they're so used to making the club head move first. But in this instance, obviously the club head won't be able to move, you need to move the handle. So moving the handle towards the target dramatically opens up the club face. It increases the gap between you and the golf club. And as I say, creates an open face. And this is how people perceive shaftling. People perceive shaftling in this direction, in a direction towards the target. And it really doesn't work that way because all it does is opens the club face in the same way inside out, pushes the handle out to the right, it opens the club face. So what you need to appreciate is that the handle must stay in front of the head, but it comes by another means. And again, I'll talk to you about that as well, but making sure that you understand the orientation of this handle relative to us as it moves around the body down through the strike area is absolutely essential. So now I'm gonna get back into the same feels of working the handle in the same gap and moving it around me. 
which will look like this. And let's see what happens. So I now create a decent amount of downstrike at 5.7. Club path is pretty darn straight, even though it would look to many of you that the handle went a long way left. And the face angle is now slightly close to the path, giving it a little draw. Hopefully, that's given you some insight into how you need to navigate the handle a little bit more to create a little bit more pressure that will give you a bit more downstrike, reduce your dynamic loft, hit a draw, and hit it a little bit further. If you've liked the video, hit the like button, subscribe, crash the bell, and I'll see you all again on the Lesson T sometime soon.